You know, I've been working on various videos about actual lore, tabletop, and whatnot, but since I released a video about Gilliman and how much I like him, my space marine karma has been unbalanced. Because I said something positive about them, or, well, about a Primarch, but close enough, I must now say something negative about him. Plus, complaining is something that comes to me as easily as breathing. I am a fan of Warhammer, after all, and we love nothing if not complaining about Warhammer. Additionally, a couple people in the comments were wondering why I disliked Space Wolves so much. Which is fair, everyone's tastes are different for a variety of reasons, and people can like the wolves, it's an opinion. As long as it's not something like supporting the Bretonians, I can accept it. But that being said, allow me to make one thing very clear. I do not like the Space Wolves. In fact, I'm reasonably sure I hate the Space Wolves. And much like the Horse Diddlers, I think it's only fair I give 40k its own X Faction Sucks video, isn't it? Ignore I did Korn, his demons are in both games, so it applies to both settings. Now, I'll just be complaining about 40k exclusively. But before I begin, let's talk about security. Here's a situation for you. You get an email saying that your account on an online game you play is in danger of being hacked and you gotta reset your password. So you go through the steps to take care of this on the link you're given and just like that, the account's gone. You, my friend, have just been the victim of a phishing scam. Luckily, this video is sponsored by NordVPN, so I can tell you just how you can keep yourself safe from that sort of thing and more. NordVPN's threat protection features can prevent this and more by detecting and warning you of malicious links and websites before you go too far down the rabbit hole. As always, the rest of Nord's wonderful features could be worth it on their own as well. What's that? More threat protection features, you ask? Well, I'd be happy to tell you of them. Intrusive ads, web trackers, people trying to stalk you online, not on Nord's watch. All of these can buzz right off because Nord ensures your safety from each of them. Speaking of privacy, don't you hate knowing that at any point, any number of different people and associations could be aware of your IP address? I hate that. I hate it almost as much as when my blood sugar decides it's time to do the flop because I walked up the stairs one too many times that day. Nord does too, the spying thing, not the blood sugar thing, so you can just set your IP to be in one of thousands of servers worldwide. Just like that, as far as anyone looking in is concerned, you're in Mexico, or Canada or Germany. With over 60 countries to choose from, you've got plenty of options. And of course, this also means you get access to those countries' versions of certain websites. Game on sale in another country but not your own? Well, look at that. As far as the website is concerned, your computer is in that country. TV show blocked at home but not abroad? Well, now your TV is abroad, because Nord can be used on up to six devices and is available for every major platform. I'm not done yet, because it's time for a birthday celebration. Nord's turning 11 this year, and instead of you giving them gifts, they've decided to share some with you. With every purchase of a two-year plan, you can get from three months to a whole year of Nord services for free. On top of that, using my handy link in the description, which is also on screen for you right now, staring you down like it's an old western movie, you get another month of free service guaranteed. And on top of that, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you somehow don't want Nord, you can cancel at any time during those 30 days at no cost. That's https colon forward slash forward slash nordvpn.com slash pancreas no work for for all of the goodies I just laid out for you. Download Nord now and ensure you're getting the most out of your internet. Alright, buckle in, fellas, it's time for me to bitch and moan like an expert. Just a few things to clarify before we get going. One, and please do keep this in mind, this is once again me giving an opinion. This is my point of view on the Space Wolves. That doesn't mean yours is wrong, or that I personally think less of you for liking them. Gotta hammer that home, this being the internet and all. If I specify after every sentence that I am giving you opinions, this video will be obnoxious as hell to listen to. So please mentally add the phrase, Pancreas no work is not only giving you an opinion, but primarily talks out of his ass rather than his mouth after everything I say. Two, it's mostly going to be 40k space wolves, not so much the Horus heresy. I'm not terribly knowledgeable on the specifics of the wolves during that time as a chapter. I know the gist of what they and Lemon were up to during that time, sure, but not much beyond that. Are we all good on all this stuff? Alright, sick. Let's go. In fact, since I said I don't hate them nearly as much as the Bretonians, how about some things I actually like about them first? Help even things out between us, Mr. or Mrs. Hypothetical Space Wolf fan. One, I like Lehman Russ. I've got no issues with him. Sure, he's a flawed character and kind of an asshole, but perfect characters are boring. That's why I don't really care for Sanguinius all that much. Aside from the red thirst and his, you know, slight anger issues, he's too goddamn perfect. But Lehman's brash, impulsive, and quite the hypocrite, while at the same time shows genuine care for for his brothers in Legion. He's also pretty introspective at times, appreciating some of the stuff Lorgar has written down and regretting what he's had to do to his fellow Primarchs. I mean, hell, he even tried to talk to Magnus before he burned Prospero down, and he hated everything Magnus stood for. 
Once again, by the way, a reminder that Magnus did pretty much everything wrong. Two, the idea of space Vikings is rad. I mean, Vikings are cool as hell, they're Vikings. You see this horny bastard? He's ready to kick chew and ass gum, and he's all out of kick. And the idea of Viking super soldiers, oh good god, please more of that. And 40k is the perfect setting to have something like space Vikings in it, something so Damn stupid, but so cool. Three, the idea of a chapter of Space Marines pissing off the Inquisition and whatnot is great. I love the Inquisition, but more so as part of the setting than any particular love for them. A group of people going around blowing up planets as part of their job is wonderful for 40k, and I'm glad they exist. That being said, that's kind of an evil thing to do, even if you think it's a necessary evil, and a group of Astartes giving them a good kick in the balls every now and then is pretty nice to see. Finally, Lucas the Trickster's rule that used to let him just kill a Titan if he was close enough to it when he died. Phenomenally funny. Nice warlord, jackass, but consider that I'm stopping time for both of us now. But with that, I am mostly out of nice things to say and I'm going to begin complaining. Let's start with the small fry, some everyone can agree is dumb. The constant naming of things after wolves. Space wolves and their wolf guard and wolfen, and yeah, TTS already made the joke, but wolf, 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 wolf. Almost everyone hates it, almost everyone hates those stupid helmets they got that look like GW sanctioned fur bait. This is nothing new, but it's always gonna be something worth bullying. Moving on to something substantial, man, they are a chapter of Mary Sue's, aren't they? Matt Ward's Ultramarines were probably stronger than the Emperor with the stuff they pulled off, but the Space Wolves aren't far behind. Let's start off with the months of shame. Like I said, the idea of kicking the Inquisition in their oh-so-holy balls is great. They shouldn't always get their way. And butchering your own soldiers because they fought demons is just silly. There wouldn't be Acadia left if the Imperium always did that. Logan Grimnar isn't a fan of this, and other Imperial policies than Grey Knights, which surely must have affected the Space Souls at least once in their 10,000 year history, but I guess now is the only time they felt like arguing about it. Grimnar and his wolves start blocking fire from inquisitorial ships firing on refugee vessels, and even manage to hold themselves back from returning fire on the Inquisition. When the Inquisition calls for a truce where both sides show up with their weapons power down, the Inquisition naturally lied about this and immediately fires upon the wolves. So far, so good, nothing Mary Sue likes so far, and honestly, I commend the wolves for this shit. Good on them. And yet, after these nice points, the Space Wolves can seem to do nothing but get their way. When Logan arrives to the Inquisitorial flagship, he not only kills a Grand Master of the Grey Knights before the guy can even draw his weapon, he and three of his honor guards shoot their way out of an Inquisition ship that had every intention of fighting them in escape. They just take the ship and sail the merry way back to Fenris. And after that, it doesn't get better. Because when the Inquisition shows up for round two and attempts to blockade Fenris, the Space Wolves show up with their ultra-massive fleet they just have and fight them on mostly even terms. More Grey Knights are killed, the Inquisitor in charge is killed, and the Space Wolves manage to hold their own against not only the entire Imperial fleet that the Inquisition mustered, not only a pretty respectable amount of Grey Knights, but an entire additional chapter of Space Marines the Inquisition called in for backup. Because aren't the Wolves just so goddamn cool. It only ended when Bjorn, who as an aside I actually quite like, so I guess he's another thing I can tolerate about the wolves, teleported onto the ship Logan was painting a lovely shade of corn red and told everyone involved to chill the hell out. And the end result of all of this was essentially Inquisition going, alright, we may be done, but we're gonna keep an eye on ya. That's the end result of openly fist fighting the Inquisition. Not a declaration that they're heretics, not another round of warfare, the Inquisition going, we will look into how to defeat the space wolves in the future, like some reading of a company's financial report of the year. Piss off. They should be rerouting orc hordes to Fenris every other day, not going, you'll rue the day, you damn wolves, and then leaving. Speaking of corn red, did you know Logan has an axe with a cornate spirit inside of it? He just carries it around, no issues from it whatsoever. Even when the explicitly cornate spirit inside of it was activated to help him punk on Magnus the Red, no problems holding it. You know, he can just do that, no corruptive influence or anything. Now, Marnius Kalgar also has his gauntlets of Ultramar, which were reclaimed by Gilliman from Chaos one day. But for one, those were reclaimed, as in were once belonging to Loyalists, were captured by traitors, and then returned to Loyalist hands. Also, there's no demon inside of those things. Another example I'm going to use is Castellan Crow. He's got a demonic sword as well and that thing actively tries to escape from him. The difference is that Castle and Crow is a Grey Knight of the Purifier variety. Grey Knights are constantly supposed to combat chaos, and are chosen for those who are not only physically worthy, but those who passed hundreds of grueling, excruciating tests to ensure that they would never fall to chaos. And Purifiers are those who are exceptionally pure amongst what I just described. That's the kind of Marine Crow is, and he's just barely able to contain his demon sword. Meanwhile, Logan's just walking around with the damn thing in the open like his flies down, just waving it in front of 
of everyone's face like any halfway decent psyker isn't going to be able to sense the pure evil coming from the middle of his weapon. Given that 40k is 40k, by all rights, Logan Grimnar should be put down like the dog he is. Alright, let, let's, let's go onwards. I can't keep talking about a weapon for 10 minutes straight. Ragnar Blackmane. I know I said I wouldn't keep restating how this is all my opinion because it'd get annoying, but now I feel especially compelled to say that this is all my opinion. Because I haven't read his books. Most of them are by William King of Gotrick and Felix fame, so I'm sure they're pretty good. I hear he's got an asshole of plot armor in him, but I can't vouch for that. No, what I'm here to complain about is Ragnar fighting Gaz Cole and cutting off his goddamn head. Let's look at Gaz, and more importantly, his biggest rival in the Imperium, Commissar Yerik. The best fight Gaz has ever been given, who was captured and let go solely because Gaz didn't want to waste such a good enemy by executing him as a prisoner. The man who was probably more responsible for Armageddon not living up to its name than any of the Marines present, who is loved because while yes he is a commissar, at the end of the day he's just a regular old guy who went toe to toe with the biggest orc in the galaxy and held his own. How did GW handle this relationship between these two arch rivals? Oh well they didn't handle it, replace Eric some space marine, who gives a shit, everyone likes space marines. Make it a wolf too, why the hell not, everything is space marines, and since it's not an ultramarine it's gotta be a goddamn wolf. Fuck right off. Admittedly, this may not specifically be a space wolf thing, but it was the wolves who were chosen to be the marines to fight Gaskol instead of Yerik, and I'm bitching about the wolves, so it's going in here. Some rude priests had visions about the orcs doing some bad stuff to Fenris, so obviously it's time to get involved in another conflict, because the space wolves might be going through the aftermath of Magnus the Red using them like a fleshlight, but they can still afford to wage war against the single strongest orc in the galaxy. They're the space wolves, of course they can actually handle all of that and not just have it be empty bravado. It's the wolves! Sure, unlike the Smurfs, the Space Wolves don't have 500 entire worlds dedicated solely to backing them up, but they've got this. I mean, they're too cool to lose, how could they? And you know what, let's talk about those visions a bit, and the rune priests who had them. If you weren't aware, the Space Wolves say that their power comes not from the warp the way other psychers do, but from the world spirit of Fenris. That instead of coming from chaos, it comes from their planet they love oh so very much, the bunch of hippies. And if I've read correctly, this has been more or less confirmed to have at least some amount of truth behind it due to the wolves' belief in this being the case. Now, the idea of something like this happening is not what I'm opposed to. Belief in this setting, after all, is an almost tangible thing. And as for the hypocrisy of it, I admit it would be nice to sew and punch the wolves in the balls over using it. But Lehman Russ himself did vow to have a long, hard think about the rune priests and related matters after a talk with Malkador. So at the very least, someone at Games Workshop is self-aware enough to acknowledge the matter, which I appreciate. Also, as I was editing this video together, I realized that was the third time this video that I made a joke about someone getting punched in the nuts. I don't know why but during recording, I had balls on the brain. Anyway, stupid space wolf psychers. My issue comes from the fact that Fenris has its own spirit because the wolves and people of Fenris believe in it. There is absolutely no way in hell there are enough wolves or Fenrisians or whatever the hell those people are called to generate their own fucking spirit separate from the rest of the warp. I don't care how full of themselves they are, they just shouldn't be able to do it. There's a few thousand space wolves compared to the trillions of trillions of trillions of other beings in the galaxy that do not give a shit about Fenris. The spirit of Fenris should have been drowned out in a sea of screaming psyker souls. But because the space wolves are just so goddamn special, they alone can bend reality enough to create basically their own warp to draw power from. And you know what? Maybe if their powers only worked on Fenris, I could accept it. Maybe it wouldn't make me so goddamn angry to think about. But no, nope, rune priests get the spirit of a single planet empowering them wherever they go. What's that, Magnus? You studied the warp more than anyone, but were still duped in becoming a slave to chaos. Oh, sorry about that, bud. You should have just believed in Prospero more, I guess. What a skill issue. Am I right, fellas? Magnus the Red, more like Magnus the Big Dumb Stupid Idiot, uh, owned. If this actually happened all the time like it does for the wolves, there would be 500 different interpretations of the God Emperor running around. The Eldar Gods would still be alive, because surely if the wolves can create their own spirit, each craft world can create their own gods again. I think what really pisses me off is that people complain about the greater good warp entity because Tau souls aren't as bright as other souls. Which, as a complaint in a vacuum, is fair, but there are billions more Tau than there are people on Fenris. If the wolves can get away with this shit, there is no reason the Tau shouldn't be able to. The sheer number of them compared to the space wolves mean they should have no problem forming their own warp entity with the wolves being able to do so. 
But you know what? All of this, every single bit of lore here, I could forgive if it weren't for one thing. One single solitary thing. The Space Wolves are not Space Vikings. They might look like Space Vikings, they might drink like Space Vikings, but Space Vikings they are not. They're Viking cosplayers at best, because you know what the actual Vikings did? Trade with other nations, explore new lands and settle them, even if only temporarily. Integrate themselves into other nations and empires. And the Space Wolves do none of of that. There is no Space Wolf equivalent to those old Viking colonies in North America. There's nothing like a Space Wolf colony in the Ghoul Stars that failed to prop up but would have still been an incredibly interesting piece of lore. There's no Space Wolf company sailing across the galaxy to deliver goods from Fenris or any other extreme equivalent to the Vikings' history being traders and merchants as well as warriors. There are no expeditions to chart unknown sectors of space. And what kills me the most, what would have been such an incredible amazing piece of lore it would make me forgive every single thing I've said so far single-handedly, is that they have no equivalent to the Varangian Guard. For a very brief historical breakdown, the Varangian Guard was an elite unit of the Byzantine Empire, or the Roman Empire if you want to be correct about it. It was primarily composed of who else but Scandinavians, aka Vikings, and they were the bodyguards of the Roman Emperor. And I don't care how a good 20% of the comments are going to be, this is heresy, worded slightly differently. Can you imagine how awesome it'd be if there was a group of space wolves guarding an Eldar Farseer or a Tau Ethereal? There's so much you could do with that. Perhaps in a battle against Chaos or the Tyranids, the Wolves and one of the nicer Xenos factions were desperate allies to survive the conflict. When it was over, they went their separate ways, and over time this developed into a trading relationship. This eventually causes something resembling the Varangians to form, with close ties between the chapter and the other faction where the Wolves will lend some of their elite to watch over them. Or if you want to go the Grimdark 40k portraying humanity route, a group of Wolves see the rest of their chapter picking fights with the Inquisition as well as anyone who looks at them funny and just leaves. I mean, I would. The hell with them. I'm joining a craft world. They probably got some wine to chug while I hang around and kill the occasional Tyranid, but no, we don't get any of this. Instead, we have a bunch of people who superficially look like Vikings, but they don't trade, they don't interact with other cultures, they just sit and drink and fight and win all the time because they're just so awesome. They are, at most, the Dora the Explorer version of Vikings. Hell, for a while they couldn't even recruit from planets other than Fenris, so them being a kick-ass Varangian guard ripoff had built-in lore reasons it couldn't work. I'll cut it here. As much as I absolutely love complaining about factions I dislike, after a certain point it stops being entertaining and starts being annoying to listen to. Have I passed that point in this video? Uh, hope not, because that wouldn't be good now, would it? But either way, I hope you can now understand why I hate the wolves so much. Less hate-driven content to come soon. I'm pretty sure I'm out of factions that just piss me off. Besides, I promise you all elves and dwarfs. Thank you to my wonderful channel members. You are the plot armor and author favoritism to my space wolves, keeping me going despite the fact that I should be in the ground by this point. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to subscribe or become a member. Either way, thank you for watching and take care out there. Bet you're waiting for the joke at the end, huh? What if I don't want to have a joke at the end of the video? What if I hate the fact that it's almost standard practice in not only the movie industry, but YouTube nowadays? What if I just want to end the video? What then? You gonna cry? Gonna shit? Piss? And maybe come? Good. Because there's nothing funny at the end of this video. There's no goof. There's no gag. It's over. You should have left a while ago.